What's up guys, it's Kaze here. So with all the recent returns coming in left and right, we got Andrade, CM Punk, The Rock. I thought back and I was like, wow, so many wrestlers have said, oh, I'm never going back to that company. And they did anyway. Now, I believe we've all been in a place where we're like, oh, I'm never doing this again. And we found ourselves doing it again. Me, for instance, there's a few jobs that I've had in the past where I'm like, oh, when I'm leaving, I'm leaving. And lo and behold, Hard times come and you gotta come back. There's even times where I've had terrible times and then towards the end of the time, I realized it wasn't that bad a time. Now WWE may be this big spectacle that we all know and love, so it's easy to forget that this is actually people's job. So when they leave and they're all upset and they make a big hoopla about it, hoopla! that's real. In the same way we all feel like we're overworked, underpaid, and underappreciated while we see other people succeed in the same work environment. So I don't judge or blame anyone for saying they've had enough of a toxic work environment and deciding to leave. I also don't judge anyone for deciding to give people second chances. So without further ado, I want to cover WWE stars who swore they never come back, but did anyway. It's a working title. So I'm gonna start off with an honorable mention and that's Edge. He retired in April of 2011, right after defending his WWE Championship. It was a mid-match, but it was his last match at the time. And that's all we had. So yeah, he has gone on record stating that he can never wrestle again and he probably won't ever wrestle again. And lo and behold, about nine years later, he returned. Man, when Edge returned, I was entirely shocked. I almost even shed a tear. I didn't, I didn't shed a tear though. But man, no, that was a dream come true. Some might even say a miracle. And the reason it's on this list is because it's a bit different than another situation with Daniel Bryan. Like when Daniel Bryan was forced to retire, he kind of still hinted, yeah, WWE won't let me wrestle, but who knows outside of WWE. If they, if they, if they would let me come back, I would come back. Oh, if, if, if you and he continuously did that until WWE's doctors inevitably cleared him. So me personally, I never thought Daniel Bryan was actually done wrestling when he said he was just because I knew how much he loved wrestling. And he kept saying no matter what, he was going to get back into the ring. So he's kind of been disqualified for this list. Okay, so the real first of the list, I have Edge's fellow Canadian, Brett the Hitman Hart. So this is probably WWE's most infamous moment of all time. It's the Montreal Screwjob. And for those of you who don't know, Bret Hart's contract was expiring. He was still the WWE champion. Vince McMahon was afraid he was going to WCW with the title. I should add, he thought he was going with the title. So this leads to his match versus Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series 1997. And at the end of the match, Shawn Michaels puts Bret in a sharpshooter that Bret didn't agree to. And Vince McMahon calls for the bell. This screwed Bret out of his title. Bret had no idea any of this was going to go down. He felt incredibly disrespected and betrayed. And this led to Vince McMahon actually letting Bret Hart punch him in the face before everybody broke it up backstage. And the next time we see Vince during his Bret Screw Bret promo, he's sporting a black eye. So life for Bret Hart after WWE was actually pretty troubling for him. While in WCW, he got concussed and was forced to retire by Goldberg. He suffered significant loss after significant loss in his family. And I'm sure when a person goes through all these things year after year, it can remind them of how easily things can be taken away from them. So after 13 years, Bret Hart returns, wins the US Championship, and has a super forgettable match with Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 26. He's still the GOAT though. So next I have Batista when he left in 2014 and came back in 2019. So Batista had quite the run in 2014, didn't he? Thing is, the fans didn't want to see any of that. He was like, kind of reduced to a meme. And the whole thing just left him with a bad taste. So while away, he's killing it in all of these movies. Like, he's great as Drax the Destroyer. There are even some mid-budget movies that he was actually really good in still. So as Batista starts to get older in age, he kind of realizes, if I'm going to have one last in-ring performance, I should do it sooner than later. Batista then comes back, and it was a great send-off for him, and he still looked pretty good out there. Alright, so let's talk about Kurt Angle's departure. Now... 
this is pretty well documented. Kurt Angle in the mid 2000s was not in a good place, just physically, emotionally, and psychologically. During this time, he was doing some of the most insane things that I've ever seen any superstar do on a regular basis. I'm talking about stuff like this. So Kurt revealed himself around this time he was taking about 65 painkillers a day. Oh my god. I had to make sure I read that correctly. Jeez. Soon after his departure in 2006, he joined TNA and that's when he kind of ramped it up physically and started taking even more damage to the body. Kurt Angle ended up having a long career in TNA. He was actually there longer than he was WWE. He was there 10 years and only in WWE for eight. He returned to WWE in 2017 to join the Hall of Fame. And also he appeared in a few in-ring matches throughout his time there, had a black son. He officially retired by Baron Corbin at WrestleMania 35. Oh, hey, Batista also retired at WrestleMania. Okay, so next we have Shawn Michaels and I was torn between covering the first time he retired and came back because he did say he was never going to wrestle again and then he gave us like 10 more years of greatness but then I also want to bring up when he said he was done for good and then he came back and took part in that god awful monstrosity of a match against Kane and Undertaker what were you thinking Sean you're gonna get paid with your friends they were all doing it, so you wanted to do it too? You're done. You said you were done. You feel good about yourself? Kane's wig fell off, and he gave us this absolute garbage match. But in 1998, he said he was done, came back in 2002, and he gave me my childhood. So I can never be too mad at him. I hate that. But regarding his first run, Sean came back in 2002 to win the Elimination Chamber. <coughs> Video coming soon. He had a super forgettable run with it and from then he kind of only wanted to put on classics with legends or put over younger talent. He had that infamous match with The Undertaker at WrestleMania and the only retirement match we should ever mention. So I do want to mention a big elephant in the room and that is CM Punk. Now CM Punk has gone on record on a two hour long record actually to voice his complaints and pretty much air all his grievances. So Punk leaves the company after seven years and at this point he's beat up, he's disgruntled, he's definitely concussed after that Royal Rumble. He's even done a few interviews outright saying I will never go back to WWE. Wow. Never ever. And he's gone for 10 years. Throughout this 10 years he's joined the UFC, he's been AEW champion, movies, TV shows, he opened up a comic book store. I say all that to say his star has risen in his time being away from the company. So although we don't have a concrete answer other than he's here to make money, not friends. I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to make money. I would say with all the star power he left with and gained while he was gone, he came back and as far as stars, the scene is wide open for him to finally main event WrestleMania. Oh no, he's injured. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, is he okay? Oh wow. no. Ooh. But yeah, guys, that's it for this one. I'll have a part two that comes out to this. This was actually really fun to make. There's actually a ton of people who left WWE and swore they'd never come back. It's almost like the company was run by an evil maniac or something. Shout out to all my new subs and my old subs. I don't like to pick favorites or anything, so I'll flip a coin and just say I love you all. Make sure you put that C button on, and until next time, keep it Kaze.